it's been practice. Yeah, I think it's been really good. I think it's been really good. A lot of a lot of give and take competitively. Um, defense is always going to be slightly ahead of the offense, especially when you're putting in a new system. But they, they've brought good energy on a consistent basis, and that's always the secret ingredient. And if we continue to do that, we're going to make our strides and we're going to get progressively better as the spring continues. Mm -hmm. I know you're limiting scrimmage play so far. I guess how are you assessing those players out there? Or what assessments are you looking for? Yeah, we start with effort first. That's the thing I'm going to always, I'm always critique first is how, how hard they're playing. And then it's about intent and operation. They've got to own their role. And there were some things today, you know, I brought it up at the end of the practice where we, we had some scheme that really gave the defense some problems today, but we didn't execute it so we could put them in check, you know, and I think that's always the thing is they're going to learn from the mistakes, but they're going to learn them way more if we score touchdowns on them and not if we throw incompletions or get to the wrong read. And so we've got to take advantage when we have an advantage on the offensive side and make sure the defense learns from those mistakes. Mm -hmm. And speaking specifically of linebacker, first Nevada signing linebacker, Caden Johnson, how's his development looking so far out on the field coming from Wisconsin? Yeah, Caden is going to be a very good football player for us. He's played a lot of football, very mature kid, really good leader, and he has really good attention to detail. So I think, you know, right now when you book him and him with Henry on the other side and some of the young guys that are starting to come along, that's going to be a good group for us. I know your mind is on the field right now, but is the season right March Madness? You have your bracket filled out. Where do you have Nevada making a strong run? Yeah, I feel strongly they're going to get to the Sweet 16 and then have an opportunity to make some noise. I just, I like where they're at. Um, you know, I'm not a big hoops guy, uh, so, so my, my critique of what really good basketball is, but I know we've got really good players. I mean, you know, you look at like Jared Lucas, I love, I love watching that kid play. His, his competitive character is, is next to none, and when you've got guard play like that in the tournament, it should be a fun run for the Wolfpack. How does maybe their, some of their success, if they do get to a Sweet 16, help your program or just the brand of Nevada? Yeah, I think it's just notoriety. You know, the more it's, it's like anything else, you know, in, any publicity sometimes is good publicity. This is great publicity. Being on a national stage and have an opportunity to, to have our brand out there consistently, I think that's awesome. And, you know, Steve and his group have done a fantastic job. And that's kind of, they're kind of the, you know, they're kind of the standard force in the athletic department right now. And so, you know, all of us want to be able to make the postseason. I know that's the expectation that Stephanie has. When you look at uh, five practices, a third of the way through spring cramp, I guess what are your biggest uh, observations or, or areas of positivity outside of yeah. this competitiveness you mentioned? I'd say willingness. You know, they've been open to the schemes that we're putting in, uh, how we're coaching. I've been really pleased with the coaching staff. I think they've brought really good energy, and their on-the-field demeanor has been really good. Um, I think there's opportunities to hold these guys accountable, and we're taking advantage of those. That's how they're going to learn. We can't let the little things slide, or they're going to become big things. And so I think I've been really pleased with our coaching staff energy. I've been really pleased with the, the way the kids have taken to our coaching. I want to ask about Henry. You mentioned him earlier. I mean, he obviously wanted to play here last year, didn't get that chance. What have you learned about him and yeah, what he wants to get out of his last year of college? I think he's hungry. You know, he's a talented young player, and um, he's, he's had to kind of, you know, wait his turn. You know, that's a tough deal when you're a 4 4 transfer and you think you've got your percentage degree, and that's not what it is. And now you got to kind of go down on scout team and have a different role. And, uh, you know, I think he recognizes that he needs to be a leader on our defense, and I think he's embraced that thus far. You guys also added a couple of running backs. Uh, Patrick Garo, we were able to speak with last week. I guess what it seems like a, a really great guy. I guess what have you, what do you like about his game and what have you learned about him as a person? Highly productive. Um, you know, he's like a mini Mark Ingram, uh, you know, a guy that rests for almost 1,200 yards in the ACC, a very competitive conference, um, very mature very very seasoned as not just a player but as a person I think he's been a good a good mentor for some of our younger players especially in that room and we're excited to get him rolling once we get to fall camp the department announced the Joe Batoni Austin Corbett camp coming back I don't know how much familiarity you have with them but just to see two guys who've had a ton of success in the NFL kind of kick off your guys spring game what does that mean to you? No, I think it's awesome for the community I think it says a lot about this place that there's so many guys, whether it's Virgil or Austin or Joel, that come back and give back within this community and to this place. And, and that, I think that speaks to how special it is. And that's what we're trying to recapture is, is having, you know, having this be a destination for our former players. They want to come back. They want to live in Reno. They want to give back to this community in a variety of ways like, like those three gentlemen that I talked about are. I think we saw Chris Alt sighting out here. I guess uh, having him involved in the program, how important is that for you, given uh, the respect that you kind of showed for him during your introductory press conference and what he has done for this school? Yeah, I mean, he, he's an institution. I mean, there's no other way. I mean, a guy that played here, coached here three different tenures. He's a Hall of Fame coach. And I think that having, having him out here to, to bounce ideas off of or just let him have some observations or him being able to encourage our guys, that's, that's hugely important.
And the one thing I can tell you is nobody has all the answers. And if you can surround yourself with people who have experience, you can gain from that. And that's what I'm looking for from, from Coach Aldis every once in a while. You know, he's not gonna he's not gonna give me information or advice. We had that talk, but if I ask for it, I'll get an honest answer and I appreciate that. What's the biggest area you feel like you guys need to improve? Where's maybe the biggest deficiency you've seen through five practices? Yeah, execution. I mean like just just you know, it's a lot of it's timing, repetition, whether it's some of our option stuff or, you know, in the red zone, some of the scheme plays that we have dialed up and it's just hard to hard to replicate that. You know, hey, we do the install, they get to track it, they did do it on air. It's just way different when you have live bullets. And I think that we're probably about where I thought we'd be, defense slightly ahead of the offense, but offense is quickly making strides and starting to make some plays and so that's been really gratifying to see and I think it I think we're gonna have a really competitive second half of spring ball. So, you know, in your opening press conference, you emphasize running the ball. So, you know, through these first couple practices, how does having a coach like Mike Lynch uh, help maximize the potential of that? Yeah, I think it's not just Mike, but, but Brian Armstrong. I think, uh, you know, when we were at Montana State, we were consistently one of the top five teams in the country running the football. And the one thing that I always appreciated about both Mike and, and Brian was it wasn't just the scheme going in that worked. It was their ability to adapt and adjust at halftime to take advantage of what the defenses were doing to us. And I think those were two guys that have had a lot of experience doing that. And that's an invaluable thing when you have, hey, because there's going to be times where, you know, hey, they're going to take away the base things that you're trying to do. So you have to be able to adapt. And both of those guys are experts at that. Yeah. So, I mean, with 10 running backs currently on the roster right now, I mean, what have you seen so, so far through, uh, through practice that's really stood out about the group? Yeah, I think Sean has done a really nice job. He, he's shown a lot of maturity. And it's a hard transition, right? You know, a guy that came from Oregon and and now he's got to kind of earn his earn his stripes again, so to speak. And he's been awesome. His leadership has been really good. I think he's got the talent to be really productive back in the Mountain West. Uh, I like Dom. You know, Dom Ball's the other kid that has, has flashed at times. Unfortunately, put the ball in the ground down here in the red zone, but he'll learn from that. Uh, but he's a dynamic guy. He's got really good speed. And I think those those two guys have probably stood out the most out of that running back room right now. And then we've got the other guys that are kind of waiting in the wings once we get Ashton and, and Patrick healthy. Can you just walk us through last year, I guess, some of the emotions you went through, hoping to play for the Wolfpack and not being cleared? Man, that was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Uh, just sitting on the sidelines every Saturday, seeing my boys go out to war, and I couldn't help them at all. And I couldn't make the impact that I know I could make. Uh, it actually hurt me a lot mentally but I also brought a fire back in me to prepare myself for this upcoming year. Uh, it was a big learning step for me, and, and I'm just grateful that it happened because I came back better and stronger, and I came back lighter than ever. So I, obviously I'm grateful for that. For that. You got to practice with the team, right? You just couldn't play in games? Like, yeah. What was it like going through practice, you know, trying to put in that hard work and just knowing that Saturday was never going to come? Uh, practice actually was kind of hectic because I got a lot of, A Henry, chill out, you know, calm down, you know. But I, I was just so eager to make plays in practice, and. But then again, I still want to bring that juice and fire every day uh, last year, and I'm still going to continue to do that today. Well, I guess what did you learn through that uh, experience about yourself, you know, just having to display that patience that maybe you didn't think you were going to have to do? Uh, what I learned is it can happen to anyone. Uh, I honestly thought it was going to be clear. I thought last year was going to be my last year. But then again, you know, being actually, you know, one of the few people that got their year taken away, uh, I would say it's a big learning experience, but I say I grew from it. What's the biggest positive, I guess, that, that you do take from it, knowing that you know you, you are going to have another year, and you, you maybe got a year to get better in practices? Uh, the best that I learned, uh, that I could say, is being with Coach Tilt. Honestly, uh, he's a big program changer. Uh, you know, he, he's he's a players person. Uh, he takes care of his players. You know, we got a nutritionist. We never go hungry. Uh, man, like I, I just love him. I love what he's about. He's a realist, and I'm just grateful that I actually get to be under him. There's probably some apprehension after Coach Wilson left. I guess um, you know when did you know? Coach Show was someone that you'd, you'd jive with and that you would be excited to play for? Uh, I knew it was going to be one when uh, one of my cousins played for my, at Montana State. Uh, you know, I was thinking about leaving. You know, I had some questions about it. I talked to my family about it. But then Coach Show, he met with me one on one and he completely changed my mind. Uh, I saw what he was about, I saw the energy he brought. You know, he doesn't want to restart, he wants to launch. And, and that's what we're ready to do. And I honestly believe like this year is going to be the one. Who's the cousin and what, what was his uh, uh, he, me message to you, I guess? Yeah, so his name is Taylor Two Ice Sopo. He played guard over there with Montana State under Coach Tote. They won a championship together. And the message that he told me is I would regret leaving under Coach Tote. Uh, and honestly, ever since then, I don't I don't regret leaving at all. Obviously, you know, playing on the defensive line is a little new for you. So getting a year worth of practice, I guess, what did you learn most about that position, you know, getting back up there on that line? Uh, so I actually switched to outside linebacker. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the biggest thing I had to do was lose weight. Uh, last year I was 271, now I'm 238. Uh, I feel faster, quicker, 
And this defense that Coach Cho and Coach Ion got for me is it's a beautiful scheme, and, and they they really depend on me to make plays and. I'm coming. To, I'm coming this year to, to satisfy that. So that edge position, then. That's yes, what sir. you wanted to play last yeah. year, right? Yeah, that's what I was wanting to play. But they had other minds. But I'm, I'm happy I got to play and be more comfortable where I'm at. Why do you? Feel, why are you more comfortable there? Why do you feel like it fits your skill set more? I feel like because I'm a. I feel like I'm a great pass rusher. Uh, this conference doesn't have a, like you know known for a lot of pass rushers. We had one last year at Colorado State, a couple at Fresno State, and. I want to be that one for Nevada. Uh, I want to make sure that we bring that edge. You know, we got a, we added a couple uh, weapons to the room, Solo, Caden, and it just feels good having two edges on the field with me that, you know, can ball and do the same exact thing as me. Also, two edges instead of one this year? Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, what are your expectations for this year personally? What are, you, what are the goals you want to achieve? To win. Uh, man, I did two and 10, I, I never want to experience that again. Uh, but really, uh, this year, I'm really focusing on, you know, making first team, being that dude this year, being the guy that everyone looks up to. Uh, I really want to make be that impact player that everyone's depending on me to be. Your brother's on the team too, right? I yes, sir. The rest are, uh, yeah. What does that mean to you to finally get to play with him? Man, it means the world. Uh, you know, I always want to play with him. Uh, that was the goal from the start, and I'm happy I get to finish it here at Nevada where I started. Yeah, I'm sure the parents are really happy as well. I guess what are their emotions seeing you guys on the same roster on the same team? They brought a couple of tears to them. Uh, they were actually, you know, they didn't believe it at first, but for us to actually be together, you know, it, it means a lot because me and him having that brother connection, yeah, it means a lot. <laughs> How did you go about losing 40 pounds? Man, it was it was tough at first, but man, I, if I wanted to do what I wanted to do for Nevada, I had to do it. I had to lose the weight. It was a lot of mental focus and a lot of dedication, so I had to make sure to lock in and be the best player for myself so I could help impact the team. The switch in positions, is that something you brought the coach showed, or I guess how did that play out? Uh, I guess they saw the twitchiness in me. Uh, I actually played outside linebacker at Cal before I came here, so I, it's a little familiar with the play schemes and stuff like that, but yeah. Awesome. That's all we got for you. Sir, Thanks so much for the time. Good luck this year. Uh, so walk us through last year, your first year at Nevada, I guess. Uh, what did you take away from that season? Um, I feel like as a team, we, le we left a lot out of there, out there on the field, but I, I, I feel like I really established myself as a player for this defense, and I look forward to continuing that. Yeah, really the second half of the season, you got yes, to build a lot more. I guess yes, how sir. much um, confidence did that give you knowing you uh, played the Mountain West? It gave me a lot more confidence coming from a place where I didn't play too much and just getting the opportunity to come here and just really establish myself and earn that, I mean, get that confidence. Uh, and then walk us through the coaching change and I guess how you absorb that and, and what excites you about this new era in Nevada football. Uh, the coaching change has been good so far. I feel like I'm, I'm still getting to know, the, know uh, most of the coaches, but it's been good. What do you like about Coach Chode? I mean, he seems like a pretty passionate, motivational kind of guy. I like that he's real. He keeps everything real. He just, he's all about just keeping us all together and just really competing. We didn't have too much competing last year, and this year we're really competing. You can feel the energy at practice where everybody's just going at it, talking, and just we're competing at a high level. Obviously, you guys lost a, a couple of really good safeties in Imani and, yes, and uh, Richard. I guess what, what do you see as your role in, in this defensive backfield this season? Um... I'm still playing a nickel spot, but we do got, we we still got guys that can still play back in that safety spot. Aiden, Tori, uh, Keaton, Keyshawn. We got a lot of a lot of guys that can uh, take that take that step. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of safeties. I guess how have you tried to welcome them and, and make them comfortable here in Nevada, knowing that you know you were a transfer at one point and kind of new to this area. Uh, just help them out any way I can. You know, it's hard coming to a new place and getting to know everybody. Just being kind to those people and just really getting to know them and that's really it so you mentioned you didn't play a ton at utah and then mm -hmm. you know coming here and getting on the field i guess were there any doubts of you know how, how do i stack up as a college player or did you always have that confidence in I, I feel like i always had that confidence in myself like I, I always knew i could play and that's why i decided to go somewhere else and just get the opportunity yeah i guess what did you i guess learn about you know the college level and actually being out there on saturdays and, and feeling uh, what that was like i mean i played a little bit at utah so i got a little taste of it yeah. but it, it's it's fun. It's it's <laughs> it's competitive, physical, and I, I like that. What makes you a good nickel in your mind? What what do you think are your your main skill sets that make you a good college player? Uh, I feel like I'm a very smart player. I pick up on things really fast, and I just do do my job and make sure everybody else around me is good. How have you, uh, I guess, uh, you know, kind of enjoyed uh, you know this spring and learning this new scheme? Uh -huh. and, you know, what are maybe some of your favorite things about the the new defense you guys are learning? Um, I like that we run a lot of man in this defense. You know, it's always fun just taking care of what you got in front of you, and I really enjoy that. Obviously, Keaton came here with a lot of accolades. I guess yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about his game, what, what you've enjoyed about him in the backfield. Uh, I feel like Key is just very athletic. He 
he know he knows what he's doing. Like he picks up a thing really, really fast. Yeah. You can see that. Coach Schultz talked a lot about the unity and trying to build mm -hmm. this team together. I mean, talk us through some of the stuff you guys did in the winter conditioning and you know, uh, trying to bond a little bit more uh -huh. than maybe last year. Well, we had these things called uh, Culture Wednesdays. So every Wednesday we came in, we just did something as a team, whether that was just getting in small groups and talking to each other, getting to know getting to know our teammates really because we didn't have a lot of that. Like a lot of people from last year said they, they didn't know like many guys' names. So we got in small groups. We went around campus doing things. We had to do like a treasure hunt and just in small groups for time. Like it was, it was fun. It was competitive and it was like we we're all together. We had to all work together. You guys teammates. pushed a truck across the field. Yeah. Uh, I think Ashton told us you guys were diving for bricks. In yeah, the we had to dive for bricks in the bottom of the pool. That was, I ain't gonna lie, that, that pool was hard. So <laughs> in that water was hard. Did you have like a favorite and a least favorite activity, most challenging? Uh, my favorite was probably the pool because I was good at it. I just <laughs> dove straight in there and just grabbed a brick and, and just went straight up. So I was, I was pretty good at the pool one. Okay, and what about the hardest one? Uh, I'm gonna say pushing that truck was hard. Pushing that truck was hard. <laughs> oh, so you weren't sitting in it because there were some guys who got. I was sitting in it, it but I I could see how how it feels. Like it was a, like my group. We did the pool first, so we were already yeah. tired from the pool. Yeah. So we, the the truck was the last thing we did. So everybody's already dead. Yeah. And I could see it in their face. Like we had to push it 100 yards. So mm -hmm. you could tell that was the hardest thing for people in my group. How is that gonna benefit you guys uh, once you get to into the season? Just you know having that different bond. Um, I feel like we we know like. We know our teammates and we know what they can do. We know how they can contribute and we just we just use that to motivate them and we, we really get to know our teammates. What are your goals individually for this season? Um, just establish myself with this new coaching staff and just earn everybody's respect. Yeah, I mean, kind of a first impression, a new yes, fresh sir. slate for everyone. And yes, like sir. you said, you were playing a lot at the end of last year. Do you feel like yeah. you kind of have to reprove yourself to these coaches? Yes, sir, most definitely. Out there? Yes, sir. Like nothing, not, they said it when we came here, nothing's given. So everybody starts over from zero and just got to work their way back up.